Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is I, the one and only Queen, <laughs> Miss Amy Tasha. Well, if you're new here, now would be the time to subscribe to my channel. But if you're not so sure, you can go and watch my Get to Know Me video. I'm going to try and post the link somewhere here. Get to know me and subscribe to my channel. As for my fam, my YouTube fam, welcome back. Today's video is story time with me. I will be talking about how I moved to Abidjan. I'm sure you enjoyed this one. So if you've watched my get to know me tag, um, I stated that I worked with an international furniture company. So I started working with this company in 2019, like um, the last quarter of 2019. So, so there was talks about expansion and, you know, people moving, <laughs> but because I mean, I'm a newbie, right? So I didn't really like put my mind into, yes, the discussion was there, but I wasn't expecting to be called upon. How can I? Who am I? From where? Why? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> fast forward to 2020, right? So we resumed for 2020. And yeah, January, that was where it all began. <laughs> Guys, please um, ignore my earpiece. Um, I don't have a mic yet. And there's so much noise happening outside. Even though my windows are shut, the noise is crazy. So pardon me, please, um, just for today. So that you people will hear me, okay? This story, I need you people to hear me. <laughs> Thank you. So back to my story. So in January, um, in fact, they just confirmed me January. I just need you to know how long I have been with this company, right? So, and then my boss comes to work on a Monday, Monday morning, can't forget. And he goes, Amaka, are you busy? I'd like to see you. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you know that we are expanding and we want to open a store in Ivory Coast, Abidjan. And I said, yes, sir. Everybody knows that. <laughs> So he was like, yeah, um, so based on that information, I, we are considering, like, we want you to go there and manage the new store. Yeah, that was me. I was like, at that moment, I froze in my head. I was like, My brothers and sisters <laughs> i was like me sir he said yikes okay he said anyway um yeah i know you need to think about it you have to discuss with your mother right he said but i don't have time so i need an answer by wednesday so go and consult with your gods with your oracle and come back to me on wednesday and i was like next tomorrow wednesday sir or next week wednesday <laughs> and he goes madam i don't have time next tomorrow wednesday i was like okay okay sir no problem you have an answer by wednesday and then he said okay yeah that's all i wanted to talk to you about and then he goes oh yeah one more thing i've told everybody that you are going to accept this job so don't don't fall my hand and say, oh, you can't take it. Okay, sir. No problem, sir. <laughs> I'm like, yeesh. But I do not speak French, man. So what is going to happen? Anyway, when is the morning, my boss sends me a message. And he's like, madam, what's my answer? <laughs> I said, I have a few questions. <laughs> he said, shoot. I'm like, I don't speak French. If you don't know, now you know. I don't speak French. So how am I supposed to work in a French-speaking country? He said, oh, don't worry. We're going to employ bilinguals, people who speak English and French so that you can train them. You'll be fine. What's my answer? I was like, 
Okay then, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> so that was how I accepted the job. Like we did not discuss salary. <laughs> we didn't discuss any like nothing. I just that was it. I accepted it. I was like, yeah, okay, no problem. And, and he says, okay, so get ready. Um, you believe in March? I was like, okay, no problem. That's fine. Then fast forward, COVID now happened, right? And plans changed, everything scattered. So I will not lie. In my mind, I was happy because I was like, <sighs> I've got to accept the one that is bigger than me. So let me just, ah, yes, let me first, let me first relax. Wait. So COVID happened March, April, there was a lockdown. Like I was saying, COVID happened and everything just slowed down. And I won't lie, guys. During that period, um, the airports were shut down, everything. I was actually relieved. I was actually happy. Like, <laughs> now this is me being honest. Like, for the first time, I was scared to actually move somewhere. Because when I, when I went to Ghana... I had a secondary school um, um, friend, we went to secondary school together, who was in Ghana. She was the one that helped me to process my admission in Ghana, you know. So when I came to Ghana, it was easy to settle down because I had someone there. There was somebody I knew. So she put me through like, oh, go here, don't go here, do this, don't do that. You know, it was easy to transit and besides, obviously, they speak English. It wasn't difficult. So in my head, I sat down, I was like, God. I don't know anybody in this country. Hey, Father Lord, they speak French. Where do I want to start from? I did not listen to French when I was in secondary school. Even in primary school, I hated that thing, man. Ah, now, see, I was like, hey, my village people have finally caught up with me. Jesus, learn French, learn French, you do not learn. So I started asking myself, so the Chinese I refuse to learn in university. Ah, is that how they are going to move me to China? Jesus. So, <laughs> just for laughs. So I was, I was, I was, I was, I was worried because I didn't know. I was like, oh, how am I going to make friends? How do I go out? How do I communicate with people? How do I know my way around? But then the same me, the same overthinker, I was like, fuck it, man. I'm going to freestyle. If I get there, vous et vous, vous la vous, vous levez. I'm going to speak it anyhow. We are going to be all right at the end of the day. So Yeah. So, COVID happened, everything was just, eh. so I was like, I'm not going till December or 2021. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I was happy inside, deep down, I was happy. <laughs> well, my brothers and sisters, my village people caught up with me. One day, my boss just sends me a message. Madam, I found a flight for us out of Nigeria. We're living in four days. <laughs> I was like, wow. Game over. It just got real. I'll still check if I have a clip, if I have a video of the day I left Nigeria. So, yeah, that was it. Oh, four days. I went home. I was at the office when he sent me that message. So he said, when you close today, go home, pack your things, prepare for your trip. You're not coming back to work. <laughs> I got home, I told my mother and she was laughing. Like my mother did not believe that I was going in four days. Like until the morning I was going, like when they came to pick me up, like I was packing my boxes. And she was like, wow, so you're really going. <laughs> She did not believe that I was going. Even me, I did like four days. Nah, forget it, that flight. It's not go because I mean, uh -uh. all the flights that were happening were evacuation flights. Evacuation flights. It's not good. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. So yeah. But anyway, guys, that was it though. That was how I left. <laughs> like play, like play. I was on a plane. I was out. And I was in Abidjan. I remember, like, when I posted the video, like, bye, I, like, 
my friends are sending me a message. Bye to where? Where are you going to? Like, <laughs> this is why it was a shock to you because it was a shock to me too. You know? So, this video, you people are knowing what happened behind the scene. Even me, I did not know that I was going. I didn't know. I never expected it. Just came out of nowhere. So, that was why. As you were shocked, I was also shocked. You know? So, yeah, that was it. And I saw myself here in Abidjan. And I've been here for a couple of months now. And it's been good. I'm actually enjoying it. You know, all the fears, you know, all the things I thought of. Like, I'm actually enjoying it. So, I mean, sometimes, guys, you have to take that step. If you are really scared about something, that means you really need to do it. Like, I can do some stupid things. So, for me to be scared about this one, ah. But I'm happy I did it. I'm happy I came, actually. I'm happy I took that bold step. I'm happy I moved. So, guys, um, yeah, that is actually a summary <laughs> of how I moved or ended up in Abidjan. Um, so, I have come to the end of my story time. I hope you enjoyed my story. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also leave a comment. And also, please subscribe to my channel if you have not. Trust me, I'm going to be dropping more. Like, ah, I have plenty of story in this place. I have plenty of story. Ah. Do you want to know the challenges I've been facing since I moved to this place? Yes, that one too is another story. I have so many things to talk about about my life here in Abidjan. So, please subscribe to my channel. You know, share it. Um... And if you are in Abidjan and you speak Anglais, English, let me know in the comment section. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching till the end. You're the real MVP. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you all in my next video. I love you. And don't forget that God loves you more. Bye.